In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. God, we give you praise and honor and glory. We want to thank you. We're praying for Miss Pat, a, com a good report in the name of Jesus. We're believing in miracles. We're thanking you for Brother Randy. We're thanking you that you're here today. We're believing in the name of Jesus, God. We're believing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We're believing for Mr. Hunter over here in the name of Jesus. We're believing in miracles here in the name of Jesus. All over this building, we give you praise. Parker, that's in the hospital down there. Parker Silk, we're believing in miracles in the name of Jesus. We're giving you praise and honor and glory. We're thanking you for complete and total healing in the name of Jesus. You call out a name this morning. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. We're believing in families here in the name of Jesus. We're believing that depression is being lifted. God, in the name of Jesus. God, we're believing that burdens are being lifted this morning. We're believing that people are being set free this morning in the name of Jesus. We're giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory for every step of the way. What about unspoken requests? And the name that's above every name is your name in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I've got a few things this morning, so I'm going to get up here and spread them out. Well, I know I don't miss anything. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to say that was wonderful singing this morning. That's good. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and if, amen, amen. You know, uh, I just, I want to take a moment before I get into this. This may take a minute anyways. I've got a lot of announcements, but <clears throat> hear me out. Your participation this morning in worship and in the function of this church will determine how deep we go in God. You as an individual, if you're paying attention, if you are singing, if you are praying, if you are believing, if you're thinking about God, or are we thinking about this week, the week, the things we have to do this evening, the things we have to do tomorrow, the bank account, if you're thinking about uh, what conversation you didn't get to finish a minute ago because I started playing music. I mean, really, really. So I just want us just to keep that in mind this morning. This church is built on individuals. Every single one of us have a part, a key place to roll, to, to a key thing to, to, to t step into. Step into your role in this morning. Be a part of it. Okay, anyways, all right, on to announcements. Uh, so we've got a lot, lot going on, a lot going on in the next uh, 30 to 45 days. So uh, August 27th, uh, Brother Lee Weatherly will be joining us that morning for service. I know that he's got a word for us. Following that, we will have a church-wide meal. I think uh, the meat, the majority of the meal, the entree is going to be provided. We want uh, the sides and whatnot. We need to bring those. Uh, so that's how that day is going to be. Uh, plan to be here for a little while. His word may go 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes longer. I mean... We can devote a little bit of time prepping us plenty ahead. You've been announced. You, you, you've been made aware. Um, other things we've got, uh, the new church year is coming. On September 10th, that morning, we will have a 9 a.m. homemade cinnamon rolls, juice, milk, coffee, such, to celebrate the 92nd church year. And do we have any 90-year-olds in here? Anybody? Nobody? Can they hear me? <laughs> Nobody? None. Okay. All right. 92 years old, 92 year old church is something to be proud of. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And a third of it was with our pastor, Brother Lamar. So that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty awesome. Amen. And uh, so we've got Mount Grace Walkathon Outreach September 16th. They're in need of donations for some uh, deodorants, 50 deodorants, 100 body washes. Uh, you can give your donations to Ms. Shonda uh, by September 1st. Fall festival's coming up September 27th, a little bit over a, uh, a month out. We have uh, Christmas plays are going to be coming up on Wednesday nights uh, here. There will be a sign-up sheet in the old sanctuary foyer through these double doors and the other double doors there. Uh, in September, also, let's see, September the 9th, which would be the day before the church year uh, begins, the new church year, is the R3 Youth Conference, okay? That's for you youth people and for those of your friends that you want to invite. Uh, the church is going to be loading up the buses, heading out for that. That's September 9th. I believe that's a full-day thing. I think they get there that morning. Uh, you'll need to just bring money for your lunches. If not, good luck, okay? Money for your lunches. Y'all have to go to work. Uh, I think that's that's the main thing there. Uh, so with the church year coming to uh, an end, I want to just, uh, one, put it out there that we're going to be gathering up our uh, nursery, bless you, uh, our nursery workers, <laughs> Our nursery workers for both Wednesday nights and for Sunday mornings. Uh, this 
coming year, I'm putting together a, a list, a rotation, and a calendar just to have it all on one place. And so I know that there's some changes. Those uh, on Wednesday nights don't necessarily want to do Wednesday nights any longer. Those on Sunday mornings may not want to do Sunday mornings any longer. Switch, swap it around. With those who have uh, already signed up for the Wednesday night classes, I think if we spread it out just right, we may even have a 12-week rotation to where you don't have but one Wednesday night every four months or so. You basically, you, you, you serve, or every three months, you serve uh, four times a year. So it's not, not that pressing on those who serve. And men can do that as well. I may get in the mix myself. I'll have to be changing diapers here soon anyway. So <laughs> go ahead and get some practice in. Uh, and then, uh, so that's so you can get with me. Eventually, I'll make a, uh, a list uh, within the next couple of weeks or so. We'll, uh, you know, not necessarily a list, but a uh, sign-up sheet if you want to be on that. I don't have it ready right now, uh, but I will. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brother Timothy Free, you got a hospital bed you're wanting to give away? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mm-hmm. Amen. It's a blessed and anointed bed. <laughs> so if you, right. Okay. Yeah. So a free free bed there. If uh, 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 if you know anyone or have someone in the in your family or, or someone you know that that could be a ministry to. Uh, so I think that covers most everything uh, except for a work day. Uh, so there's a work day. This coming Saturday at 7 a.m., bring tools, uh, hammers, saws, drills, woodworking tools at 7 a.m. this coming Saturday, so six, seven days out. And uh, that'll be at 7 a.m. for the Family Life Center for the most part. I'm sure there's some other things. If we've got a crowd, we'll be able to knock out a bunch of stuff that day. I believe that'll be, be a good thing. All right. Before we go to our tithes and offerings, I've got a scripture, if we could bring it up, Proverbs 18 and verse 16. Uh, Just some new revelation on some old scripture. I think that's what we all get, new revelation on old scripture. Okay. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Okay. Okay. In Ephesians chapter 4, it talks about Jesus. He ascended and descended above and below, and then he gave gifts to men and women. You have a gift within you. Now listen, I'm talking about finances here. You have a gift within you. The sooner and faster you develop this within you, it will bring you before great men, It will put you in good places. You'll stand in a good place financially. You have a gift within you. Uh, I mean, e- even we've, we've, it's been brought up on Wednesday nights. Brother Randy's been teaching on it on Wednesday nights about cultivating this gift within you. And Hannah, in her uh, workplace, she has cultivated a gift within her, and she's rose above all of those around her in a downturn where everyone inside the the workplace is in a downturn in production or whatever the case is, however you want to measure it. But she rose above it. And it was even prophesied on a Wednesday night with my brother Randy to her that you're about to step into more abundance. You have a gift within you, and it will bring you before great men. How did that work in her life? It not only put her above everyone else, but the boss man said, hey, we need to lead a devotion here every day or weekly at minimum. Is it daily? Every morning before work. Okay? You have a gift within you. You need to cultivate it. It will bring you before great men. It will take you to places you've never thought before. It will bring you to a good place spiritually, financially, and you will be made whole prosperous, whole, fully, from the beginning to the end. So I'm about to pray if we'll have the ushers come up, and, uh, and then we'll take our offering. Father, we just thank you this morning for your love for us. We thank you for your gift you've given us, God, 
Uh, we thank you that this morning we get a chance to worship you, be a part of you, uh, be a part of what you're doing in this earth, that you are creating sons of God, daughters of God. You're raising up children. You're raising up families, God. You're teaching people thing, you're, you're things. You're bringing revelation. God, we pray over these finances of this church, every individual here, those online, visitors who are here today, we pray this week even that they'll see you in their life, no matter what it is. And Father, we bless this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Y'all stand with us this morning. Eclipsed by his glory, 
and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh It 
than any other, so much more than anything. And I love you more than any other, so much more than Now? Okay. That was on already. Hallelujah. Glad I didn't say nothing. Hallelujah. I want to start this morning, I think, in Hebrews chapter 11. Let me see if, uh, yeah, we'll start in verse one, fine. Let's read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were formed or framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was, and was not found, because God had translated him for before his translation, he made this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And Father God, I come to you. Father God yielded to you to speak. Father, that your word would be preached, that um, your truth would be revealed in, our, in this house today. Father, we just stand as your servants, your sons. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the truth of your word. It makes us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Struggled with... Uh, all the way up until this moment with this word. Not because it's not biblical or in the Bible or anything, but because it might be hard to swallow. Um, so to preach a word that you know that might stretch people, you have got to, uh, you have got to know that's relevant to what God's doing. You got to also know that uh, you're doing it because it's God, what God wants, and not what you want. And uh, there are some extreme things that are spoken in the Bible 
But when we're looking at the last days, there's some uh, very important statements made that give us some great indications of things that, that we will deal with or that will, uh, they're signs for us. For example, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Then he says something else in the Bible. is kind of crazy because it's talking about those same days and it says as it was in the days of Jonah. So we got days of Noah and we got days of Jonah. I won't be able to get deep into those days today, but it'll be coming. Because that's the only way I believe that the church, that we as believers in this time that we're living in, We've got to be clear on our beliefs. We've got to be clear on our perception of the world, what's really going on, what's not going on. Um, I'm telling you, I, I say this all the time. I don't know how to overstate the fact that, that one of my greatest concerns is when I read other statements in the Bible like this one, if the days were not shortened, the very elect would not be saved. If the days weren't shortened, even the very elect wouldn't make it. And for me, that throws such a weight on our responsibility as leaders that it's enormous. If you don't stay before the Father humbly saying, show me truth, I too could be deceived. Never think you can't be in that number. I'm just... I'm just trying to help today. I am always so concerned that what I'm learning, if I can't find it and prove it throughout Scripture, I let it go because I am fighting the good fight of faith that I will not be deceived into any erroneous doctrine, any error or deception or anything that we could stay on the cutting edge of truth and what God's doing in the earth right now today. And... It's a full-time job. But let me tell you all this. When the word comes across bold or confident for me, that is not pride. That is me saying I am serving you well. Because some of you don't have the time to do the research and the study I do both day and night. If I didn't get up and share it with you, I'm doing you an Injustice. That's why the Bible talks about honoring those that tread out the word. It's not, there he goes again, it's thank God. Somebody knows truth to keep us in truth. I'm getting off of me because today's message is going to stretch you hard. So prepare your heart for truth. To see truth. And I'm pleading with you because you'll either stone me or say praise God. Oh, God. But I'm mandated to do this. Here we go. Verse 6 said, Verse 6 said, But by faith, he said, Without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. There's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Let me tell you, here's where I'm going, church, today right here, is who is God? I'm going to talk the rest of my time this morning on that one subject, who is God? Don't shut your mind off yet. It's going to blow your mind before you this is over. So, if I don't have faith in God, I can't please him. This verse tells us so many key things. Listen, without faith, I cannot please my heavenly father. But look what he says. But for me to have faith, number one, I must know who he is. Oh, God. That he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently oh, seek God. the right God. I'm reminded in just tagging on that in John chapter 4. If y'all could pull this up, brother. We'll just start in verse 21. I want y'all to see this. This isn't a new doctrine by the writer of Hebrews. This is fact. Jesus is talking to the lady at the well. Y'all know the story well, right? Yes. 
Amen. He's saying that, give me something to drink and all those things, and she's sassy. And she's like, uh, you, you, you know, I'm a dog to you. Why would I give you something to drink? He said, look, woman, if you knew who I was, you would ask me for something to drink, and you would thirst. I mean, you would drink of something, you would thirst no more. He said, and by the way, you know, you've had five husbands. The one you're with now is not your husband. I just want you to know I know who you are. She ended up eyes opening, understanding this is a man of God sent by God Runs to the city. She's the first we say evangelist. But I want to stay on this track. He's saying to this same woman, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Listen to me. He said, you worship, but you know not what. There's a lot of Christians worship, but they don't know what. They don't know who. They don't know why. They just do it. I always look for something to challenge. That's just the way I preach, because if I don't challenge you, I ain't growing you. So I'm challenging you right now. I've been saved since, uh, what year was that? 79, that's a little while ago. I can't count it. Somebody can figure it out for me. May 20th, my sister's birthday. 44 years ago, I got born again in Nazarene Church. Get my life to Jesus, everything changed. Hallelujah. Um, there are still times before I understood what I'm telling you about. I'm talking about being a preacher. Where I'd leave the service, I was, telling, I was just speaking Bruce about this. I said, I could leave church and be just as confused about what God was doing, what this was all about as anybody else, but I'd routinely do it and give it all I got. Uh. Any of y'all ever left church kind of confused? Why we even come show up on Sunday and do all this? I mean, yeah. I believe we've all had that thought. I'm praying today that you get a better understanding of who, what, why. And the foundation that we're laying will come full circle and find out everything that God has for us. It's going to take time, but it'll come full circle and understand everything that God done from Genesis 1-1 to the last verse in the Bible was always a planned plan of the Father laid out. He never changed his intention. But he is working the plan, and he's working it well. I don't know about you, but I want to be part of the plan. Amen. So who is this God? Who is God that we worship him? Listen, li listen to me. I got to say this right here. So hear me. Some people can't fathom, cannot embrace uh, the concept of father, of, of God. So we relegate that to Jesus Christ who came in the flesh so we can relate to a man or a person or a being that took on flesh and went through the same trials we went through. Hear me now. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm not discounting our Lord and Savior, King of Kings. I'm trying to get you to understand why Father sent him and who the Father was. And so what I'm telling you is, is that when you start understanding why Jesus even had to come, and the, everything that he really did when he came, you'll start growing exponentially in the spirit and say, I've got understanding and clarity now. Oh what this is all about, it oh comes God. clear. But here's, here's what I'm telling you. Here's what I'm telling you. Father God, we all know by the word of God that he's a spirit. So we must worship him in spirit and in truth. He goes on and tells him that. Jesus tells the Samaritan lady that right there in that text, right? right? So now he seeks such to worship him. So here's the things that we say about God. Hear me. All these are true attributes. God is love. God is faithful. In God there is no variableness or shadow of turning. He's consistent, constant, steady, steadfast, never changeable, able to be trusted. That God, that's his attribute. It ain't who he is. 
We talk about his attributes all the time. We, we tag them on, on signs and, and we sing songs about them. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. Jehovah Sikkanu. You know, we go on and on. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. All right, so we are tagging words with the word Jehovah, a name of God, with an attribute of God. God is my healer. God is my deliverer. God is my peace. God is my provider. But we still aren't talking about who God is. That's an attribute of our Father. He's an amazing God. Oh, God. Wonderful Father. Amen. Loving and kind and providing, protecting, delivering, saving. He's amazing. Right. But who is he? Any of y'all ever studied anything like Greek mythology or just ancient or just ancient culture, you'll find out that there's a multitude, I mean multiplicity of gods. If you go back to the early Mesopotamian region, they had thousands of gods in some of the earliest settlements ever known to man. Not trying to confuse you, I'm trying to enlighten you. So we got to know we're serving the right God and who that God is. And who it God was that sent his son Jesus and who is that God we will one day stand before. So this morning, or as I prayed this week, God said, talk about me. He said, because until my people really understand who I am, how can they have faith in me, and how will they be able to become, uh, become pleasing to me, and how can I meet all of their needs when they don't even know what God they are talking to? Listen to me. Jesus came to pay the price to make us right with God, oh, God. not with himself. Almighty God. Oh, God, no man comes to the Father except by Jesus. Who is this God, oh, God. Yeah. that sent his only son? Who is he? I said, Father, I need to know. I mean, I need to know you. I need to know. Jesus said, they said, teach us to pray. Jesus, he said, here's how you pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What is his name? Who is he we praying? Some of you know. Some of you don't know. And I'm not getting stuck on the name today. We're going to go beyond the name. We're going to go into who he is. So here, here we go. One of the first instances, instances in the Bible that you find God would be in Genesis 1-1. You can pull that up if you want to. That's so funny because my concept was just as messed up as anybody else's. I wasn't born into this world having an understanding. I guarantee you that. I'm telling you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, I'm going to stop in verse 1. I want to tell you something. One of the names, let, let, let me say this first. Hold right there. When you see the letters G-O-D, God, you think there's one. There are many. Now, I know that statement right there just killed half the people. But hold with me. It's scriptural. It's in the Bible. This is Bible. See, because what American church does, we attribute everything G-O-D as only one God. If you do that, what you're going to have is massive confusion when you find out what this one God done that was totally terrible and horrific, and you think it's our God. That word right there in the beginning, God, is the word Elohim. It's a plural word. Here's what I'm telling the church today, and I know it's going to stretch us. But if I don't say this, you'll never understand his kingdom. Never. So I'm sorry. It's just what I got to do. So, Brother Randy, what is this saying? Just hold with me. By the time you leave today, you'll say, I never saw that, but that's good. God was literally in a council of other deity gods, and he said, let us make 
earth. Let us make man. He said all those things to Elohim. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. I don't blame you. I had to lay down probably first time too. You can lean over. I'm good. Just lean over and just listen. Just listen. So here's what I want to tell you. But I'm going to have to give you some scripture more than one or two. And some that aren't diced and sliced and, and, and cut in half. I'm going to have to give you the word. Right? Y'all with me? Amen. I mean, you ought to be amen in that. You better give me something. Yeah. You're going to get this crazy on Sunday morning. Okay. We, we will. So, so what I want to tell you is, is that we need to get our definition of God clear. God is the defining nature of, an, of a being or an entity that is eternal. Do you know that there are scriptures in the Bible? Somebody could Google them right now and it's more than one that says our God is the God of gods. Plural. Elohim. Our God is the God of Elohim. It's in the Bible. What's that, Jacob? That is in Psalm 82. We'll go there in a minute. So, Father, God, not only does He want a family now on earth, but guess what? He had originally created his family in the heavens. God, for some reason, we have always thought Father God was totally alone until Jesus popped out. I mean, it's just kind of a concept. Y'all get what I'm saying. But no, there's angels all around the throne. Let me just throw out another nugget for you. I won't have time to teach on today. Is that, is that at the end of it all, there will be 24 elders sitting around the throne. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. You need to, you need to you know, just let your mind go a minute. Let your mind go. It's in the Bible. So, so God said, God said, let us make man in our image. Uh-oh. Doggone it. Here he goes. <clears throat> let, let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. So, so what I'm, I'm telling you is, is that God's replication of man into a fleshly being was a duplicate of what he had already created in a spirit being. Right. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let me just cut to it and tell you. Go to Genesis 6 for me if you would. Let's just go to it and let's, let me show you who these deities are and then I can get to the rest of it, what he said to them and how it happened. All right, so here's the thing. So I'm wanting you to understand. I'm going to talk about who this God is. I'm going to try to get it all in the next few minutes. It's going to be crazy hard. I can tell you that right now. In uh, Genesis 6, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto men. Verse 2, the sons of God. Stop right there. The sons of God. People tried to say that that was other earthly men. That was all kind of stuff. That's been proven absolutely false. And it's absolutely all through the Bible. I'm going to show you proof of it in one scripture in a minute. These sons of God were sons that were created by our Heavenly Father to be His participants in the universes He ever created. They were to work with Him, fellowship with Him, and do everything with Him Divine deities, gods, demigods, sons of the Most High God. That's just a fact. Just a fact. So what I'm wanting you to understand is, is that it doesn't change who our God is nor the relevance of Him or anything. But it might start uh, increasing your foundation to understand the warfare that we're in. That you'll start understanding some of the things that's going to happen in the earth in the last days because it ain't just about getting a mark and, and, and no food on the shelves. <clears throat> it's going to go a little deeper than that eventually. Hallelujah. All right, let's go. Let's, let's move forward. What are some of the names of God? I'm going to kind of press through this fast. What are some of the names and what's the first occurrences? Well, I'll give you one. Um, one of the first ones we come to is right there in Genesis 1 is Elohim. I told you before, Elohim is a, multi, uh, a multiplicity. It's a word of multiples. It, it, it's a plural word. It's a plural word. It means more than one. And so... In many places in the Bible, you'll be reading and it'll say God and it's the word Elohim. 
But one of the first uh, occasions that we see of a different word for our God is the word L. It's simply E-L, L. L means God. It means the Almighty One. Listen to me. It means, it means that which is above, that is mighty, more powerful. Where's that at, Brother Randy? Well, that would be first occurrence. And the, and the law of first mentions is powerful, and it applies here. It's Genesis 14, 18, 19. Listen to what it says. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and water, uh, and he was the high priest of the most high God, El. Most high God. How can he be the most high one if there ain't other ones? He's the most high God. We serve the most high God. I'm just telling you, it makes me want to come in here and praise and worship because I know who I'm praising. And I want to just say we ought to be going crazy in here because we serve the most high God. He's not a low-level little imp or something. He's all-powerful. Lord have mercy I can't wait to see him one day hallelujah it says and he and he blessed and uh and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of the most El right there high God possessor of heaven and earth did you hear me he's the most high God what's his name it ain't El El means ultimate God I'm just telling you it's why we have Elohim El means God him is plural that's where they get the word Elohim. It's a plural of God. Where did those plurals come from? From God. God created sons. The sons of God saw the daughters of men, slept with them, and created a, 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 a hybrid, half human, half uh, eternal being called a Nephilim. This is reality. Why are we talking about it, Brother Randy? Because sometimes we deal with entities and spiritual things. But besides that, forget all that. When you find out how much your father loves you by sending Jesus to bring you back into sonship as a son of God, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. When you realize that God said, those sons of God, what they done was this simple. I wasn't going to talk about it today. It was this simple. They saw the daughters of men left their first place or position of service and came and had children with them. And we think we have problems with our flesh. God was betrayed by his own sons of God. And he loved you and me enough to send Jesus. And just like the Bible tells us, he says the whole earth and creation has grown until now waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. He is waiting for a people that take the veil off of their mind and understand the process and say, make me a son, O oh God, that I can stand in the earth and proclaim your truth and walk in your power and bring you glory and I, sir, will not betray you. Listen to me. Why Jesus said, when I, the Son of Man, return, will I find faith on the earth? The devil is hell-bent on us bowing to every lie and deception and confusion to where we never manifest as the full sons of God. I am hell-bent back that I will walk in that. I will walk in that. I'm telling you, it's available to the church. That whole being born again by the Lord Jesus Christ at a wonderful altar or in your vehicle and then getting empowered by the power from God, by the Holy Ghost. He didn't do that so we could have goosebumps. He did that so we could change the world. We get so tangled up in our agendas and, and flesh and pride and squabbling over if I got to sing or preach or, you know, not even here, but people on the job and my family don't like me. Keep your eyes on the king. Oh, yes, Keep your eyes on God, man. There's a bigger prize. Paul said, forget all that junk and press yes. toward the calling. It's high. Yes, man, don't tell me it ain't available. Enoch walked with God so much as a son, he has walked off. Oh, God. 
Come on, don't tell me. I got precedent, Jacob Harrison. I got precedent. Yes, God. Shoot. Jesus, God is just waiting. God is just waiting. He said, can my church ever get it? Can they ever get it? We have crawled to the altar for salvation. Lord, just don't let me go to hell. He said, I won't stand up. I want you to be a son. I want to put something in you. I want to empower you. I want to use you. I want to work through your life. I want to do such amazing things through you that you are a light, that you are a testimony. You bring me glory. I can say to the devil, have you considered Randy Griffith? Come on, church. That's why he told Job. That's why he said about Job, come on. Father wants to be proud of you. He told Satan, he said, have you considered my boy Job? And I'll try not to cry with Job. Because Job was walking in something. He said, he said he worshiped you just because you blessed him the way you have. God said, you can do anything but kill him. Because that boy right there, he turned his back. He ain't going to be like my sons of God that betrayed me. He will stay faithful. Oh, God. He struggled a while. But he got it back together. And when he did, God added back to him seven times all he had lost. Walking as a son of God. I'm just telling you. I'm just trying to tell you today. I'm trying to tell you. It ain't about faith. You know, like the faith movement. We've tried to teach people how to walk in faith. No, the faith is, is that I have full confidence in the God I serve. I have full confidence in my Father. Full confidence. Hallelujah to Jesus. So God sent Jesus. He had to be tempted in every way. He had to be tried. He had to be rejected. He had to be murdered. He had to be everything had to happen to him. But on the end, hanging on that cross, he said, forgive him. He said, you ain't getting me out of my place of glorification. I'm a full manifested son. I won't betray my father now. No, sir. No, sir. He was faithful to the end. I love Paul because Paul said, I've been shipwrecked, snake bit, beaten yes. with rods. I have been stoned. Yes, I've been left for dead. Yes, I've been God. forsaken of my brethren. Yes, I've had all this happen, but I remain oh, faithful. Yes, God. Yes. Right. Thank you, Lord. He said, for me to live as Christ and to die as gain, it'd be better for me. Yes, but I'll God. tell you this, when I step before him, I'll say, sir, yes, Lord, King, God, Father, I finished my course. Oh, God. I ran my race and Father of Satan. Well done. Well done. The light you shined. Yeah. They'll keep reading about it some 2,000 years later. Paul, they'll still be reading about you wondering how you done it. A son of God. A son of God. Being birthed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm probably all out of time. Hallelujah. I ain't even hardly started. I hate that clock. I got a few minutes. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here we go. All right. If you would go to Isaiah 45. Let's look at starting verse 18. I want y'all to see this. I want y'all to wrap this up. Y'all can see some scripture on it. Instead of me just telling you it's the truth. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It says, for thus saith the Lord. All right, now, now uh, I'm skipping some of the names, but the other one is Yahweh. It's, it's we spell it, Y-W-H-W, Yahweh. Y'all with me? I could give you the time of first mentions, which is with Moses. And it's basically when he told him, I am. That was the word that meant Yahweh, meaning the everlasting one, the one that always has been, always will be. So we have... From Yahweh is where we get the word Yahweh, right? We put vowels with it. It becomes Yahweh. Another word derived from that is Jehovah. Yehovah. They don't have a J in the, in, you know, in the, in the Hebrew language. So Yehovah, Jehovah. So what is his name today? It's Jehovah. It's Yahweh. It's Yahweh. That's Father's name, just so you know. But that ain't what I'm preaching about. I didn't want to do them cute sermons where you just learn more names. But now you know. That's his name. His name's not Elohim. His name's not just El. That's Almighty God. 
He is Yahweh. When he breathed the word on the, on the, on the wind, he just whispered, Yahweh. He just whispered his name. He's the most high God. I'm just glad we ain't worshiping the wrong one, Randy. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. If I fall out right now, at least I know I'm worshiping the right one. Hallelujah. All right, let me get back focused. I'm sorry. For thus saith the Lord God created the heavens. Listen. Listen to me. He's the one that created the heavens. Is everybody with me? Help me, church. Y'all with me? He created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it. All right, here's a problem. Because that word right there, the Lord, listen to this, the Lord right there is the word Yahweh. It's our God. It's our Father. Listen. God himself formed the earth and made it. He established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. There is none else. Now listen to me. People confuse that last verbiage, that little phrase, and there is none else. That don't mean there's not another deity or another God. It meant there's not another just like me. There is not another just like me. Look at your Hebrew. There's not another just like me on my equal. Verse 19. I have not spoken in secret. Listen to this. In a dark place of the earth, I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye uh, me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteous. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations, that ye have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. Oh, there's a doggone word, God. It's the word Elohim. A divine deity created by God who was over people in sections of the world And instead of leading them to Yahweh, to Father God, they led them unto other gods. Actually, many of them simply began to get the people to worship them and make idols unto them. Now you're going to understand one day the light will come on and the Greek theology you'll find out was true. It was demigods or those that God created and they began to have people worship them. It is not all mythology. Some of those gods, not all, some of them were truly sons of God that were fallen. I'm just telling you, it's, it's, I can just take, teach you this all day long. I'm telling you, I ain't saying that prideful. I'm telling you, it's all throughout the word of God. Assemble yourselves and draw, come near together, that you may escape. Listen, listen what he says. Ye that are escaped from the nations, here's what I'm fixing to tell you and show you. Those that were over those nations led them so astray. He said, I will bring out those who did not get deceived or worship these other gods. That's what he's telling us right here. Verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together who hath declared this uh, from ancient time, who hath told it from that time, have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. So what I want to tell you, if you went in there and studied all of the Hebrew on those verses, here's what it really says. I love how when they translated the Bibles, they made it easily to be understood or palatable for people. But this is what it said. God is actually speaking to his sons. And this is what he's telling them. You have done a terrible job in leading my people. And you have allowed this spirit and your own deception to lead them astray. Those I will bring out that did not follow your idols and the lies and the deception. He said, but unto you, he said, that brought them near. He said, you come together. Let's take counsel together. I am telling you, God brought them together as a council and began to tell them what their judgment would be. Brother Randy, could that be so? I mean, really, could that be so? Well, it might be. Go to Psalm 82. I'm going to finish this. Hallelujah. We're going to finish this, glory to God. 
I don't know what verse, uh, honestly. But let's read quick. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. That word right there is Elohim. Listen to me. God stands in the council of the Elohim. You know what he's painting a picture of? A pantheon. He's painting a picture of God in the middle of other gods. That's what it says. Listen to what he says. He judges among the gods. I'm just telling you, it's in the Bible. I keep saying that because I know some people think I've lost my mind. Verse 2. How long will you judge unjustly? He's correcting his sons of God. Listen to what he tells them. He said, you're judging unjustly. Listen to what he tells them. And accept the persons of the wicked. He said, you have let other things influence you away from my ways, and now you're influencing the people. Verse 3. Defend the poor. He said, you don't defend the poor and the uh, faultless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. They have become greedy and self-centered. Verse 4. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. He said, no, you're not protecting the people from the evil that the enemy. They already knew Lucifer was in the earth. They already knew they had an adversary. Listen, he said, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen to me right now. I'll have to teach on this another day. Yes. But what he's telling them is is that you've let this thing get so out of whack. Everything in my creation and my original intent is all out of whack. Verse 6. This blows my mind. I have said you are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, I created every one of you. Verse verse 7. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. He, God, brought a judgment that day in that congregation and he said, you will no longer rule my people. He said, you will die like a man. Your eternal life, I have cut it off, and you will die like a man. Here's the problem. There's nowhere in the Bible, I'm just giving you truth right here. There's nowhere in the Bible that tells us that God brought judgment to every demon, to every spirit, uh, spirit to every principality, power, spirit of wickedness, and heaven place, rose of darkness in this world. He did not. Who he brought a judgment to that day were those who were made in his image. Now let me tell you something. Hear me now. God, God could bring judgment to them then because they were already like he was in nature, not in position, not in power, but in the same nature. So he brought a judgment. The problem me and you are facing, why Paul wrote that we still war, not after the flesh, but against principalities and powers, because they were still, the ones they had trained to bring deception to the nations, the ones that served under them, we're still dealing with them today. That's why the whole world don't rejoice and worship our King and our Savior and our God, Yahweh. That's why they do not. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. So I'm telling you, God brought a judgment. God brought a judgment that day. And guess what? I can show you also in the Word. Look at it. It says, now they are held under chains of darkness. They're held under chains of darkness. These sons of God are held under chains of darkness until judgment. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on. So, uh, all right, Psalm 89. Let me see. It's 1155. Praise God. It ain't 12 o'clock yet, that witch and I. I mean, that godly hour. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth, I will make known thy faithfulness to all generations. We're going to have to go, I guess, pretty fast. It says, For I have said, Mercy shall uh, be built up forever, forever. Thy faithfulness shall thou establish uh, the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. The seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. Selah. And the heavens shall praise the wonders of the Lord. Listen to this. Thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord 
That is Yahweh. That is Jehovah. Who among the sons of the mighty can be like another. He said, who of any of y'all I created can even compare to me? He said, there's none like him. All right, verse, verse 7. Listen to this. He said, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all that are about him. That's why we praise and worship him. There's no God like unto him. O God of hosts, who is a strong Lord, like unto thee. He said, who is one like unto thee? Or to your faithfulness round about you. There's none like him. He's faithful. He's loving. He's awesome. He's our God. He's our Father. Thou rulest the raging of the sea when the waves thereof arise. Thou stillest them. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces as one that is slain thou hast scattered thine enemies with your strong arm he said you brought judgment God you bring in redemption the heavens are thine the earth is thine as the world and the fullness thereof thou hast founded them praise God the north and the south thou hast created them to board her mind shall rejoice in your name thou hast a mighty arm strong in the hand and high is thy right hand Justice and judgment are the habitation of, of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before your face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. In the name, in your name, Yahweh, in your name, they shall rejoice all the day, and in our righteousness they shall be exalted. For thou art the glory of their strength, and in the favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense. Yes, the God. Holy One of Israel is our King. Yes, God. Bless hmm. you. Then thou shalt speakest in vision yes, to thy God. Holy One and sayest, I have, laid, I have laid help upon one that oh, is God. mighty. I have exalted one chosen out of the people. Yes, God. I have found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him. Oh, God. I just want to tell you the Lord is great. He's yes, wonderful. God. Our God. We praise you today. He's Yahweh. Yes, God. He's Jehovah. Oh, God. He's Jehovah. Yes. However you want to say it, he's them. Mm. He's our God. Yes, God. Jesus brought us. No man comes to the Father except by Jesus. Yes. No man comes to the Father except they be called. Oh, God. But when we call, come to him, we can cry, Abba, Father. Praise Daddy your name. God, you're our God. We praise serve no name. other gods. That's why one of the Ten Commandments said that we would have no gods before him. It means we wouldn't let, we wouldn't let the spirit of this age, we wouldn't let evil spirits, wicked oh, spirits, we wouldn't let uh, you know, all these other kind of things that manipulate us and control us, make us envious one of another, make us jealous, make us hate, hateful, make us competitive, make us all the things we become without the spirit of God. God says, just let my spirit fill you. Just come unto me, the God of all spirit. He said, let my spirit, I sent the Holy Spirit to you. Not some weird spirit, not some strange spirit, not some perverted spirit. I sent the Holy Ghost. I sent the Holy Spirit to you. He'll lead you into all truth. He'll take that which I have said and he'll reveal it unto you. I will show you. I will, I will come and not only be with you, I'll be in you. I'll begin to restore you and create in you a son of God, a daughter of the Most High God, a child of God. And as for me and my house and as for you and your house, we say we will serve no other gods. I said we will serve no other gods. Hallelujah. One God. That's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say that again. I said we will only serve one God. And that's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our Father in heaven, our Father in glory. That is Yahweh. That is our Father God. Hallelujah. That's Daddy God. Hallelujah. That's Jehovah, the greatest, the most mighty, the everlasting, from everlasting, the God that was, that is, and is to come. He's our God. He's our God. He's our God. He's our God. Hallelujah. I'm just going to touch this scripture and I'm going to everybody stand after it. It's uh, this right here where he told us that in his creation, we'll look at this another time. 
It said during his creation, all of the sons of God looked on. He said, y'all were right there with me. When I told you earlier that word Elohim meant the plurality of God. When God created the heavens and the earth, he said, my sons were right there with me. And y'all saw it. And they shouted for joy. Look what God has created. It's, it's what I told you today is truth. It might be a stretch, but it's true. And they celebrated. And God said, how can you celebrate what I've created? And then I give you authority in the earth. And then you betray me. Thank you, God. And then you betray me. I want to open the altar for just a moment or however long. We, I can be here all afternoon. Other people can leave if you want. Here's why I want to open the altar is because if you at any point have said, Father, I've served you, but Father, I'm not serving you like I once did, or maybe I need to rededicate my life. Yep. Brother Tim, you can start playing whatever you want. Here's what I want to tell you, church. I've betrayed God before. I've betrayed God before. I've turned my back. I've shut down. But his mercy's new every day. And when I said, Father, forgive me, he said, come on back, son. And hear me today, church. He's so merciful because he knows how much we don't know. When I was just meditating on this, I've been studying this stuff for a long time, you know, just, but anyway, t this week when I was, yesterday, I just began to weep. And I said, Father, I said, my mom and daddy didn't know this. They never hurt. He said, but they love me. It doesn't make us any more saved knowing more about the Father's plan for mankind. It wasn't a frivolous thought up at the last minute. He's looking for a family. He's looking for those that love him with all their heart that say, I'll remain faithful through thick and thin, good, bad, and indifferent. God, I'm with you. And I will not, I will not, I will not stop. It don't have to be perfect. You're my God. I thank God my mom and daddy said he's my God. Is he your God today? Would you like to freshly commit yourself to him and say, Father, if I betrayed you in any way or Father, if I pulled back, I'm just fully committed to bring you glory. Father, you'll take my life and make something wonderful because he so wants your life to be an example of his goodness. He does. He wants to say, that's my boy, that's my girl right there. He does. Y'all stand with me. Altar's still open. We ain't done. Father God, I bless you and praise your holy name, Father. I bless you and praise your holy name, Father God. We know who you are, Father. We do know who you are. We're not, we're not those that worship we know not what or who. We know who you are. You're Yahweh. You're Jehovah. And you're the greatest of all gods. You are the ultimate, the highest, the everlasting. That's why he's called the Ancient of Days. Before him, there was nothing that was. But he thought he could create those in his image that would be his family and participate with him in his creations and in his majesty and in his wonder. But they betrayed him. Father God, forgive us of our backslidings. David said it. Father God, others said it. Father, I say it now. Forgive us of our backslidings, Father, when we pull back from you. Father God, when we're carried away by other gods, and that could be anything, a habit, Father, that could be a, a hobby. Father God, that could be a lust. That could be a desire. That could be an attitude. But Father God, whatever it is, we just want to bring you glory. We want to bring you glory. Father, I ask right now, 
right now to you, Father, in front of these people. I say, Father, make me everything you want me to be. Father God, I have not yet attained that. For I have not apprehended that for which you have apprehended me. But Father God, it is my desire, oh God. Father, that we could apprehend it. And it's not forgiveness, Father. It's not just you love us. It's not that, Father God. It's an impartation of your spirit and a commitment of our heart that we will bring you glory at all times and in all ways. Father God, that we'll be a vessel unto righteousness. We'll be a vessel unto honor that you can use, Father God, that you can show yourself mighty through in this earth, that we will be a light set on a hill. We will be salt, Father God, bringing uh, correction and bringing purification everywhere we go. And Father God, with your joy, with your peace, with your love, with your victory, Father God, we will let your aroma be shared everywhere we go go and Father God people without a doubt to say there's something different about you and we can say it is my God it is my heavenly Father it is the spirit of my Father we bless you Lord we bless you Father we bless you Father hallelujah let's just worship hallelujah And I lift my voice to worship you, O my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Father, the more that we learn of your greatness and your plan, the smaller we seem. But Father, we know in your plan that when we decrease, you increase. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you, Lord. 
I just thank you that you sent Jesus to do this a mighty work. And Father, that's why your word tells us that if we are alive in these days to see this happening, we are a blessed generation. Church, I want to kind of let you uh, leave with that, with this statement right here. Is that when you really begin to understand that God chose you to be alive at this time in history, you, we're being given the most amazing opportunity of any generation ever born to see God and probably see the return of His Son, Jesus, our King. And see the consummation of not only the kingdom, but of the sons of God fully manifest again in the earth. You're dismissed. Hallelujah.